How does that feel, Mark? Uh, warm. It's one of the warm day. Well, we're yeah. And when it comes to galactic evolution on Star Trek, the man responsible for supervising the creation of new species is Michael Westmore. His godlike powers are limited to foam rubber, latex, and heavy doses of makeup. But he and his crew make the most of their materials and their imaginations. I do a lot of research by looking at uh, the Smithsonian Magazine, National Geographic, um, even down to the children's magazine, Zoo World and Ranger Rick. When we first started doing our, our Klingons for the television show, I started looking around for something to base it on. And I picked dinosaur bones. I found a wonderful book that had a cross section of dinosaur vertebrae and things. And all you have to do is like, take a little quarter section of it and duplicate it right on down the, the front of the head. Science fiction has the problem that when we try and dramatize it here, uh, we're limited to human beings and, and the uh, amount that you can stretch some latex in order to create a different creature. And I think our imaginations, therefore, are not as fruitful as I think the universe will be. On Star Trek The Next Generation, Brent Spiner plays a character that's neither alien nor human. He's Data, an android with superhuman physical and mental abilities. I have experienced a brief power surge in my positronic subprocessor, but I am fine. In the 24th century, Dr. Noonien Soong created Data in his own image. But back in the 20th century, Dr. Rodney Brooks at MIT is taking a more humble approach. This is a robot that's really based on principles that we've seen in looking at real insects and how they coordinate their legs. It looks uh, like one. Yeah, morphologically, it looks very similar because that happens to be a very good engineering solution to getting over rough terrain with small legs. Now, how do we save ourselves? Well, if we, it's got sensors in front. It's whisker felt my hand. It's backing off, and it's going to try and figure out how to go around. It's not doing any long-range sensing here. It's so going to touch this one, so it's, it'll it's probably run into back that up one. here in a moment. So yeah. it's going to back up again. Uh, except oh, he got caught, <laughs> he got caught, he got caught. <laughs> of course, that's never happened before. No. <laughs> this robot may not be as agile as Data, but even Data has some bad days. This was a head that was used in an episode called Time Zero when uh, Data had his head blown off and it rolled, had to roll across the floor like a bowling ball. And I actually had a cast off of Brent's face. That this was literally a mold taken uh, right out of a, a negative mold from him. And to make it look kind of business-like on the other end, I cut up computer chips and inlaid them in there. How close are you to the real data or to a humanoid? We're a long way from the real data. Uh, but what we've done is build a robot which has the same form as a human, although up till now we haven't got the skin on it. We're working on, on building a plastic skin for it. And we use electric motors instead of muscles. We use steel instead of uh, bones as the structure of the system. And we have little computers which sense the temperature of the motor to see if the motor's working too hard and the body's getting too hot. And we want the robot to be aware of that so it can feel itself interacting with the world. Robots move by small electric motors. But to make a lifelike android that moves, Ian Hunter of MIT is developing artificial muscles. Nature developed muscle 550 million years ago, and uh, it's a tough act to beat. The artificial muscle fibers we're developing contract and relax like muscles in your own body. The wheel that we've produced is a water wheel, and it's being driven by a single artificial muscle fiber. The fiber is about double the diameter of a human hair and is able to drive that comparatively large water wheel. The artificial muscle fibers used in these eyes here produce uh, over 100 times more force than corresponding human muscles. So if you were to build an android out of these fibers, that android could potentially be 100 times stronger than a human. With the development of synthetic muscles, Scientists are inching toward the realization of Dr. Noonien Sung's masterpiece. But then there's that little problem of duplicating Data's positronic brain. The brain is actually sitting a few feet away from the robot with a big cable connecting it to the robot itself. The human brain is a, is a vast mystery. I don't expect to get close to Data in my lifetime uh, because of the complexity of what it is we have to explore there. 
But along the way, there's other things we can do to make computers more usable. And we see that in Star Trek, too. Data isn't the only computer around. Computer, what are the current power conversion levels? Power conversion levels are at 97.2%. The computers on the Enterprise are big and powerful. However, Star Trek writers have been hard-pressed to keep ahead of 20th century computer technology. During the uh, run of the original series in the late 1960s, uh, there were no such things as PCs. Uh, there were no such things as handheld calculators. In the old Star Trek show, you see people using computers in a way that seems silly to us now, because we right now have computers that are more advanced than what that show was predicting for us to have 400 years from now. And right now, uh, the second show, The Next Generation, is predicting computer capability that, while advanced, will probably be surpassed in 10 or 20 years. So they're predicting technology that 400 years from now that we will actually achieve in, in just a couple of decades.